welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I'm participating in the Unbe Readable Challenge. I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my Oliver. And if you're returning, you know we love you. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I'm gonna use two of these square wood dowels I got from Hobby Lobby. They're $1.99 each. They're half inch thick and 36 inches long. I am going to use two of these boards from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna also use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and then my chalk couture paste in pesto and bumblebee and black velvet. And then I'm gonna use this new transfer. I love it. I was so excited when I saw it. I knew this uh, challenge was coming up and I knew I needed to get it. So it was called Honey Bee Farm. I'm gonna start off by uh, taping those two signs together because I'm gonna cut it. I have it marked um, at a spot that I wanted to cut them at. And then I'm also gonna cut the, these wood dowels. One I'm cutting in half and then the other one I'm cutting two st strips that I think they were 10 inches. Then after I got done cutting everything down, I put those signs together and I'm attaching them using these jumbo craft sticks. I'm just using wood glue and hot glue on them. And then I'm gonna mark off um, where I wanna put the hanger. So I'm just making some marks there. And then I use my crocodile to go in and make my holes. I was having a hard time seeing where that uh, mark was, but I just made uh, two holes. And then I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. After that was done, I made uh, lines. I wanted to have some lines that went across and then I just drew a straight line with my pencil. And then once I had them, I uh, used my finger to kind of smear it, um, smear in that uh, lead. After that, I took my uh, stencil. Now, since this is the first time of using it, I am fuzzing it. If you're not a, a familiar with Chalk Couture, it is an adhesive transfer, and so we like to fuzz it, so that way it does not pull up the paint. Now, I don't think I fuzzed this enough. I think I ended up fuzzing it three times. Normally, I do about five, because it was kind of hard pulling up, and there was an area where it did pull up a little bit of the paint. So it's very important to make sure you fuzz it enough times. So once it was done, I went ahead and I'm using my black velvet here. I'm gonna use it on the big words here, Honey Bee Farm, and then the bottom words, uh, Wildflower Honey. But after I got done doing the first letters, I'm gonna do, uh, I can't remember what they call it. Um, but I'm gonna peel it up. So as you see, I'm peeling it up this way. It's because I knew it was going to take me a little while to get everything um, colored in. And if the paste dries on that silk screen, then when you go to pull it up, it will it will pull up some of the um, paste and you won't have a good clear image. So whenever I do a bigger transfer like this, I'm always uh, I always pull it up. So I'm doing the yellow here. I'm doing the B and then I'm going to do the little uh, words on the sides here. And then after, I'm going to pull that up as well. And then I'm going to uh, do pesto along the leaves, and then I'll finish the bottom words. If you have never tried Chalk Couture, and if you are interested, I am a designer, and I do have links to my page in my description box that you can check out. If you have any questions, you're more than, um, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. You can just send me an email, or you can ask in the comments here, and I would really love to answer them for you. Um, I always, always, uh, suggest checking out the Club Couture because to me, I think that's just a really good deal uh, to get started if you are interested. So just check out my link there and uh, you'll be able to um, go in and look and see what all we have. Okay, so once I was done with my sign and I washed off my transfer, I took the square dowels that um, we I had cut down and I'm using a baby wipe and antique wax and I'm just going over my square dowels with them. After that, I put my hanger back into the holes that I created, and then I'm using wood glue and hot glue, and I'm going all the way around, and um, well, I go through the middle part with my wood glue, and then I'm gonna put hot glue on the sides of my wood glue, and then I'm gonna add these square dowels to make a frame. So I'm just adding the first one here, 
I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> there. I just add that one. And then I went to go do the top and went, oh, wait, I've got the hanger. But I thought, you know, I do want to go over the hanger, just have the, the hanger part sticking out. So I went ahead and put um, the wood glue on here and then I'll add some hot glue. And then I'm just going to put that wood dowel over my hanger where it's, where it's coming through the holes. Just like you see right there. And it turned out perfect. After that, I did the same thing on the sides. And I don't know why I'm showing all of this, but I, I am. But really, this is all there is for this one. I was thinking about adding a bow um, or adding something more, but I just really loved how simple this was. And it just kind of gives it that rustic farmhouse look. And I absolutely love the way this came out. You have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below. By the way, I did add some uh, Mod Podge over it to seal it as well. Okay, so today is the Unbereathable uh, Challenge. It is hosted by Jackie with Crafting and Mimi's World, C with CJ DIY, and Christine with DIY Craftaholics. Make sure you check out these ladies. They are fabulous, and check out the playlist. I will have links to all of them in my description box below. And here is DIY number two. Now, I forgot to say that we have to make at least one wreath through all of this, and then anything to do with bees. So I got this Beeth Reform at Dollar Tree and I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And then I got these ribbons from Amazon. They came with six different um, types or I should say styles. So I originally wanted to paint the head and the, and the antennas and the little bumblebee bottom butt part, a uh, sting or whatever, with black because I wasn't going to cover it. Um, but I end up doing something different. So I'm going to cut out, uh, I think these were six inches. I just went and cut out, um, I think I ended up cutting out like 17 of these. And I did this with each of those ribbons. And then after I had them all cut out, I took some zip ties here. And I am going to take my ribbons and I'm going to scrunch in the middle so it kind of looks like a bow tie. And I'm going to do that with the three different um, styles that I have here and I'm going to put them together and then I'm going to put them inside of that uh, zip tie and I'm just going to go around all of the wings with that. Now when I did this I do the bottom part of the body as well but it just I felt like it wasn't looking like a bee so um, I ended up taking a couple off squishing them more together and then I decided instead of the black, because it was kind of hard to see, I took some jute twine here and I'm just going to wrap it around the head and the antennas and then some more of the bottom part of the bee. And that way it kind of, I feel like it helped give it more of a shape. Otherwise, it just kind of looked like a whole bunch of ribbons and it was kind of hard to tell what it is. Um, so if you get this, uh, it might be better to do a different uh, different design with the ribbon so that you can see the outline of it a little bit better. Um, but I wasn't going to change it after doing all of that. <laughs> so then after that, I took one of these plaques from Dollar Tree and I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. And then I found this decal for, uh, on my Cricut Design Space and imprinted it out. And I'm just going to add this to the front of the bee. I just felt, felt like it needed something more than just the ribbon. So once I have this all on, I did use my crocodile to create holes and it was hard because this wood piece was really thick and I had to really, really push hard. So that's why I didn't show it because um, I was just really pushing hard. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm just going to use some zip ties here and I'm just going to connect it. Um, the ribbon really does help cover that zip tie. Um, but I think on the top part, I think I end up putting a B, but I'm just going to here. I'm doing the top part of it to um, getting it all zipped in. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it, but zip tied in. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess. And one note, when you're, if you are doing something like this and you're uh, using the zip tie with the ribbons, it's always best not to tighten it completely until you have all the ribbons exactly the way you want them and then zip tie it, tie it or tighten it all the way. Yeah, I took a little bee here. Now this is not one from Dollar Tree. 
I do have the ones from Dollar Tree. That one was uh, from Amazon that I bought last year and I just had it sitting next to me so I used it. Then I just took a small piece of uh, twine here and I'm making a hanger because those ribbons make it kind of puffy in the back. It was hard to uh, hang it otherwise so I just made a little hanger. And there it is. You'll have to let me know what you think about this bee wreath in the comment box below. Okay, I want to take this time to thank all my subscribers. You guys all mean the world to me. And if you're enjoying today's video, if you like home decor on a budget, holiday decor, thrift flips, gift ideas, and please hit that subscribe button. And then make sure you guys give me that thumbs up and comment and watch those ads. That really does help support my channel. And if you'd like, I do have a buy me a coffee link in the description box below, as well as links to all my social media accounts in case you would like to come follow me over there as well. Okay, here's DIY number three. So this is a little planter. I bought, uh, well, let's start with this. I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze and ink. I'm gonna use one of these crates. I'm going to use one of these hexagon signs. I bought four of them because I wanted to make a lantern, but because they're a hexagon shape, it doesn't wasn't working out too well. So then I bought, or I'm going to use some wildflowers I had in my stash. I got those last year from Dollar Tree and then some boxwood greenery from Walmart because I just absolutely love that boxwood greenery. So I started off by painting the hexagon and the crate with my uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color maize and then black. And I added some white lines along the uh, wings to kind of help bring the wings to life a little bit. Once I had them all painted and it was all dry, I'm gonna take my wood glue here, gonna put it along the bottom middle part of this hexagon sign and then add the hot glue for the immediate hold and then I'm gonna just stick it, it fits right in perfectly inside that crate. And after I have that done, I am going to, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, I used some clips there just to uh, clip the wood glue, the part with the wood glue to that sign because it wasn't sticking um, or it wasn't touching. So I wanted to make sure that it touched so that it would seal together. So then I just added some floral foam and I'm adding my boxwood greenery here. I'm just kind of cutting it all down, filling it all, all in. And then I'm gonna add um, some of those yellow flowers. I don't know what kind of flowers they are, but I thought they would match perfectly, you know, bees love flowers. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to add some flowers in here and what else do I do? Oh, I know I'm going to take some ribbon and I hope you don't hear Oliver. He's barking. There's probably a UPS truck across the street and he always has to bark at them. Oh, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking some of this ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to hot glue it around the, the front part of this crate. I think this just really... Uh, finished it off really nicely. I love the way this came together. And then after I have this all hot glued, I am going to make a bow, I believe. Yes, I'm going to make a finger bow. I'm going to do it very slowly so that you can see how I do it because I just have such a hard time explaining it. So I figure it's better for you to just watch. Um, once I have this all tightened, I'm going to uh, add it to the front of my um, basket or my crate here. I am going to dovetail the ends so that way we have a nice finished look and then hot glue that on. And that's all there was. This is a very simple, easy one. Um, but I really love the way it came out. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, so it is a time for a celebration of your recreation. And Mary, she's been so busy with all her Valentine's Day stuff. Mary, these are beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing them with me. And if you have a creation or a recreation that you would like me to showcase for you, you can send email uh, pictures of your creations to my email address listed there, or you can send them to me through Facebook Messenger or Instagram, and I'd be more than happy to showcase them for you. Okay, so here's DIY number four. 
So I'm going to take this honeycomb wreath form and this juke cord. The juke cord came from Walmart. I've had it in my stash for quite a while. Um, and then this new wreath form from Dollar Tree. So I am going to just cover this with my juke cord. I'm going to hot glue it on and then I just kind of go through and hot glue it to the bottom. Now I know hot glue and uh, metal don't like each other too well, but I'll show you in a little bit. I, am, I do something a little extra to make sure that it all stays attached because this actually makes it kind of heavy. So it might be better to actually use something not as thick of cord as I used, um, but I'm just gonna hot glue this cord to itself, just like you see, put some hot glue, press that uh, jute rope into the hot glue, and then I just wrap it and do it all over, and I do this all the way up. Um, but like I was saying, it might be a better idea if you wanna recreate this to use a thinner, um, one that's not so thick because it does make this kind of heavy for that wire. It kind of feels like it needs something behind it. But anyways, so once I got to the top, I just cut it off and did the final uh, loop there. And then I took some twine and my um, embroid uh, my upholstery needle and I am just sewing that twine through the rope and then tying knots. And I did this all around the back just to give it that extra support so that way um, if any of the hot glue decides it doesn't want to work, it's still attached to um, this wreath frame. And I just did it kind of all over, really making sure you got the, I got the edges, um, but I did it through the middle as well. After I was all done with that, I took this uh, some vinyl and I'm just tracing out my paint bottle because I wanted a circle. And then I just cut out that vinyl and I am sticking it right on top of my beehive. And after that, I took some hot glue and I'm just making some drips coming out of the beehive, just like you see there. And um, I'm gonna add more. And then I'm gonna add some more drips just all around the beehive, just like you see. And I don't know, this probably isn't in real life, but. In my mind, it was like, okay, we've got honey coming outside. And then any of the hot glue that you could see um, from where I attached it, I end up painting that. But I'll show you that in a minute. So first of all, I painted this shelf from Dollar Tree with my yellow. And then I took, um, I'm not sure what this color is. I'll look it up and have it in my description box. But I took this color and I, this is where I'm painting all the drips. And then I went in between any hot glue that I could see that was in between the ropes. I just painted that as well so you could, so it looks like you could see honey in between the layers of the rope. Then I took my shelf after it was dry and I am just adding this decal. And I got this decal off of Cricut Design Space as well. And I am just going to add this to um, my honeycomb. I was going to use um, zip ties. I don't know why I didn't. I ended up not using zip ties. So instead I took my E6000 and hot glue, put it all around the back of my shelf here and going to add that right to the front of my beehive. Then I just took some of these are the bees from Dollar Tree. I took the little sticker thing off of them and I used hot glue. Then I took a uh, some more ribbon here. I think I cut these at about five or six inches and I cut out three of each design. And then I'm just doing like I did on the first wreath form, just scrunching it up like a, a bow tie. And then I am going to um, just keep adding all of them together. And then I'm gonna use uh, some twine to connect them. Okay, and then once I had the twine on there, I just kind of fluffed it as much as I could here. And then I'm just going to hot glue it to the top or right above my my sign. I probably should have went a little higher because it kind of covers the welcome part. Um, and then I decide to add a B on the, the front of the bow there. And then I'm just adding a hanger here as well. And that's all there is for this one. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well. And 
what you would have done with that wreath form if you would have used ribbon and how you would have done it. Anyways, hopefully you find this wreath form. Uh, <laughs> okay, so final reveal is coming right up. So make sure you guys um, comment, give me that thumbs up, subscribe before you go, all that fun stuff. And make sure you check out the host channels as well as the playlist. Show everyone some love. And I thought, I can't talk. Okay, with all that, you guys, I will be back on Monday with another video. So you guys have a very blessed weekend. And I will be back on, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>